Hello everyone, this is Vandana Havanipur, uh, the author of uh, Concurrent Programming in Mac OS X and iOS. And in this video I want to show you how to use some of the cool features in Xcode 4 which are for refactoring. Um, for, for demonstration purposes I've already created an application that is an iPhone application which has the ability to um, download images and uh, create an image view from the image and display it on a view. Um, and this is simply for demonstration purposes. You can apply what I'm telling you in this video to any type of project that uh, you are creating uh, using Xcode 4. doesn't matter if it's an iPhone project, an iPad project, whether it's a universal application or a Mac OS X application, it really doesn't matter. Um, so let's go and I'll show you what I have created so far. Um, so if I open Xcode, you can see that I've written a lot of code here. I wouldn't actually call it a lot, but you can see that I'm using Grand Central Dispatch to, uh, for example, create an image view here. I'm, just, I'm using the main queue here, and I am using a concurrent global concurrent queue to download asynchronous, asynchronously. Although the download request is basically sent synchronously, but it's in a um, concurrent queue, so it doesn't block the main thread. Now, if you want to read more about this, um, I can uh, I can tell you that one of the best resources available right now is the book that uh, I've written with O'Reilly, and the book's called uh, Concurrent Programming in Mac OS X and iOS. So if you want to pick a copy of that up, it will really help you with global uh, with Grand Central Dispatch. But the, the, the purpose of recording this video isn't really that. What I want to show you is uh, more about um, refactoring your code. Now, as you can see here, I have um, about six parameters or seven, one, two, three, four, five, six parameters that I've kept here. You can see that it is the rectangle for my image view. It is a, an image view, view color. It's a shadow color. It's an air shadow color, the activity indicator style and a URL to download. Well, I'll, I'll show you what this all means in a, in, in a second. And I will run the application for you so you can see what's happening. The way the program works, it can dynamically generate image views, apply shadow to them, and download an image and display them in the image view. And I can put those image views anywhere. So I can just give it a different rectangle. For example, I, say, I can say 200 by 250, and I want um, my shadow to be black, or it's blue. And I want my error shadow, which we'll, which we'll see in a couple of, couple of seconds. And I'll run the application, see what happens. So I can give it parameters, and you can see that that the frame has changed. Now, I will revert this to what we had before. Now the code here is going to be using the variables that I have up here. And uh, if you if you have a look at it, the view did load instance method of my view controller is a bit crowded. I mean, you can see that there is a lot of code here, and a professional developer wouldn't do something like this. Although this isn't too much code, but still it's a lot of code. So what we can do, we can use um, uh, refactoring in Xcode 4 to kind of make our code a bit cleaner. So what we can do is I would say I want to cut this whole thing out of the view that load. Traditionally, what you what you could do was to go here and create a new method and uh, write your own method and give it these parameters. But Xcode 4 is capable of doing this for us. So I'm going to select the code that I no longer want to be in my view that load instance method of the view controller. And I will right click on it and I'll say refactor. And you can see that there is a method here. There is an item here that says extract. If you press this, it will actually determine all the inputs that have to be applied to this block of code here and creates parameters. You can see that it's it's determined that all these values are provided up here are actually parameters to the piece of code that I've selected here. That is fantastic. So what we can do, I will go and change this. I will say dynamically, so this is the name of the method, dynamically create image view with error shadow color because the first parameter is of course the error shadow color. And I will say preview. And after preview, just have a look at what it's gonna create. It's gonna create a new method for you. And if there are any warnings or if, or if there is any error, it's gonna display up here. And I will say save. Enable snapshot so that we can return back to what we had before. Now have a look at, have a look at what happened. It created a method up here and it applied all the parameters. Now make it a bit cleaner just by 
breaking the parameters to the next line, next line, just a bit, make it nicer. Um, this has to be up here, break this and break this. Okay, it's a bit cleaner now. And um, you can see that in the view that load, it has simply just called that method. So let's go ahead and compile the application and see if it's fine. Obviously it compiles successfully, we can run it. And it works fine. Now, if I'd made a mistake here, see what happens. HTTP Z, for example, and I will run the application. You can see that my image view is now is now having a red um, shadow, and si that is simply this image view error shadow color. And that is because in here I have applied those rules, but that's not the point of this video anyway. So let me break this down again here to make it a bit cleaner to understand what's happening. So you can see it's calling those that method with different parameters. Now what I want to do, I have already prepared two images here. I've I've uh, searched for them on the inter internet and I found the URLs for those. And one of them is the Xcode um, image and the other one is an iMac. So I revert this back to what I had and the next one that I want to create is I want to have an iMac displayed somewhere else. So what I will do is I want to have and another image image have you created at this URL this time here I will copy it here great and I will call the exact same method see what happens all these are going to be done concurrently I will run the application there we go fantastic okay so that was that was for extract. So you can see how easily you can extract your code into a method and uh, make your code much, much cleaner. Of course, you can, for example, even extract this piece of code or whatever that you can find which isn't clean and you believe it has to be in a different or a separate method. So that was for extract. The next thing that is really nice is rename. And the rename works simply like this. Just select your variable or select a method or whatever you have. You can either rename it by clicking here and say edit all in scope, or you can right click and say refactor and rename. And what I will do here, I will say image view rectangle, for example, and I will preview it. You can see all the changes that is going to be applied everywhere. It's going to be changed and I will say save. Simply all those instances of this local variable have been renamed. So that was renamed. The next thing, which is really, really cool, is if you, for example, believe that um, you want to create a super class for one of your classes, you can simply do that now in Xcode, and it's, it's, it's really amazing. You can just select your um, interface, you can right-click on it, and you can say refactor, and then you can say create super class. This is going to create a super class for this class, and is going to do all the all the assignments for you. Although there's one glitch that I don't think Apple has taken care of taken care of yet, which I will tell you about in, in a few seconds. Now, give give your super, super class a new name. I will say for example refactoring view controller super class. And I will preview it and then I will save it. Now, have a look here. It says important statement may need to be changed to reflect actual location of super class declaration. Well, it's just referring to this. It's okay. I will save it. Now, the glitch that I was talking about is that, um, by the way, have a look here. It's created that super class for us and it has put it here and it has imported it properly. The glitch that I was talking about is that, do you remember before this was UI view controller? Now it is the super class is UI view controller, but it has imported it in this way and this is not going to work. So if you try to compile your program, you're going to get an error because we don't have this class. And the way we have to import that is say UI kits, UI kit dot H, just like the other view controller. You can see it had this previously. So if we do that and try to compile the program, works fine and the super classing has worked perfectly. Okay, now we have a super class and we have subclass it here. So that was for creating super class. The other thing that you can do with refactoring is select a method and you can right click on it and say refactor, move up. Now what this thing does is magic. It's literally gonna move this whole method to the super class. So if I say move up and then say preview, 
you can see that it's gonna move this into the refactoring view controller super class. And I say save, the whole thing just moved out of this view controller. So how clean is that? From the mess that we had before, now we just have this. And simply because that method is now moved here to the super class. If you change your mind, then you can remove this and put it back. That there are a couple of issues here simply because it does not understand these commands here that I've applied. And you can see I'm getting some build fails and that is simply because I have not included the proper uh, header files, which I had here previously, quartz core. So I'm gonna remove these from the subclass, put them in the super class, try to compile and it works fine. I'm gonna run the application. Great, and it, it works fine. The other thing is, as I said, if you change your mind and if you wanna move this back to where we had it before, you can simply say, select it and refactor. Oh, sorry, I think we have to do it here if I'm not mistaken. I think Xcode doesn't like that for some reason. Refactor, would it want to do that? Refactor doesn't, doesn't like that. All right, okay, uh, I think I can live with that. Um, well, that's embarrassing, but it's all right. It's, I guess it's okay. And um, if I find a solution to this, I will post it in the next video. And in the next video, we're also gonna be talking about um, the last option basically for refactoring, which is encapsulation. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, just post them below.